See, I did a job for about eight years. So my 2001 to 2009 journey has been, I worked with about three three odd companies and 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 it was a great experience and all about internet marketing. So I started my career as an internet marketing professional, but I landed up in marketing core marketing itself. Hello everyone, welcome to the new episode of Be Podcaster. Today we have a very special guest, Mr. Gaurav Singhal, the founder and CEO of Blue Digital Media Private Limited. He is an expert in the field of marketing and today we are going to learn a lot about international business, marketing and entrepreneurship. So let's get started. Hi Mr. Gaurav, thank you so much for coming to our show. So how are you today? I am good and thank Shambhavi for having me here as well. So tell us a bit about you and your background, your experiences, like you have been working into digital industry since long. Yeah, yeah. So uh, tell us about a bit about your experiences. Okay, so I'll I'll share a little about my background. So I come from a city called Merit. I did my schooling from there. Thereafter, I did my graduation, which was computer science in, uh, in Gazaba. And then I moved to Delhi. And uh, since I think 2001, yeah, I completed my graduation in 2001 and since then I've been in Delhi and uh, been working with multiple companies and you know thereafter started my own also. So my journey uh, from uh, from Meera till here is it it's all about passion I, I, I feel because um, uh, there was a stage where um, I wanted to do com- computer science but I never wanted to do programming. So it was an irony kind of. So I land up doing digital because digital was not digital at that point of time. It was internet. So I land up in an internship in an internet marketing, you know, uh, as a profile. And uh, that is where my journey started uh, off my career, actually. Which year it was? It was 2000 and uh, I think one or two. That was like 2001. I completed my graduation. Just after that, you know, uh, I started my but career. Now you are more into marketing, right? So how yeah. come like from uh, computer science to marketing? So um, so computer science, computer has been, you know, uh, kind of an inspiration for me. I always, uh, you know, feel great about, um, you know, what's new happening in the world because computer has been uh, an area in, uh, you know, 1990s and uh, uh, and and 2000 and even 2010 where a lot of innovations were happening around the computer science so there were things like ai i mean a bit they were hacking which was happening there was there were a lot a lot of things which were coming up websites were new there thereafter apps came so so there was a lot of things which were attached towards computer so computer became my passion actually but i realized while doing my bca that i am not a coder now um, now what what would happen for that kind of a career is that the person will land up maybe as a project manager managing multiple projects on you know things like that but 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 i found myself um, in an area of uh, internet uh, internet was new at that point of time it was very expensive also and i was paying about maybe 80, 80 rupees to 100 rupees an hour while I was going to a cafe at, at in, in 2001 in 2002. and 2002. Yeah. It was so expensive, but it was crazy. So, so I got attached to it and I found a job in that area on itself. So like you started your career from your job, right? So when did you decide that this is the right time to get into entrepreneurship? See, I did a job for about eight years. So my 2001 to 2009 journey has been, I worked with about three, three odd companies and, 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 and it was a great experience and all about internet marketing. So I started my career as an internet marketing professional, but I landed up in marketing, core marketing itself. So entrepreneurship came, uh, I think uh, in the year 2009, I got married. And um, at that point of time, I also took a decision to 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 get into an entrepreneurship because when I discussed my dream that I want to be an entrepreneur uh, with my wife, then she uh, uh, she actually commented that, you know, you know, do you want to die saying this or do you want to do that? So, so that was a shift for me 
uh, that time I decided to start on my own and I had only one client at that point of time and it was a travel client and I I, st I started from there so what was the like first payment you received from your client 20000 rupees uh, 2009 in it was a so monthly was, payment for okay. me okay but in 2009 20000 was fair enough no that right. that was the only payment okay <laughs> and but my still, rental was, was about 14000 so mm -hmm. you know <laughs> but still it uh, was a good start, start. Yeah, yeah yeah it is right. it is so uh, coming to the entrepreneurship mm -hmm. part that since 2009 you have started and yeah. today we are sitting in 2023 so yeah. what are the trends which you uh, see that it's changing in entrepreneurship domain see entrepreneurship uh, today it's so if i see that time uh, people were not the entire ecosystem was not that supportive the mindset so it's it's all a mindset game um, I, I i come from a business family and entrepreneurship doing some other business is not really really like mm -hmm. you know kind of thing till the time you make it you know uh, so what i feel is that uh, that time the entrepreneurship and today uh, the shift is let's say every year i see people are more prone to entrepreneurship they have been hundreds and thousands and lakhs of success stories people every day keep hearing about it there's a lot of investment which is happening in this domain year after year it's growing you know tremendously it it was in millions at one one day and now it is in billions True. i mean the the valuation game has has changed the entire uh, paradigm and and i and i think uh, the people come with, coming from a business family uh, at one point of time uh, you know the father salary may be the startup salary of um, of of the son or the daughter true right so uh, so so let's say father may be earning 70000 as a salary the first entrepreneurship uh, you know salary that you withdraw from your own company could be 50 70000 true so that time people realize that this really works as well and when the entrepreneur moved to the next stage of angel funding and the self funding or maybe getting success in their own business funding is not near, is not really important right. as in at every stage if your uh, business is uh, uh, you know self sustainable and uh, it can grow it can generate the money uh, on its own i think that's a fabulous business so entrepreneurship has moved from from zero to you know maybe 90 or 100 um, uh, with the feelings of that this works and this stays so uh, during your entrepreneurship journey till now so what is the biggest challenge which you have faced see if you if you ask an entrepreneur the challenge i think every day is a challenge true every day we have to take decisions out of which some will fail for sure so failure is a part of our life if i if if mm -hmm. i rep represent entrepreneurship community then failure is something which we live every day and success is something which we get you know maybe once in a week right. or maybe some hours once in a, in a month, day right. kind of uh, once in a month so uh, now if you talk about the biggest challenges um, in my life so so everyone's life is up and down at some time it's 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 quite high because when you have a lot of money in your bank account you feel a lot safe you feel a lot happy that's an entrepreneur feeling mm -hmm. right when you don't have the money in your account and you have checks to pay your salaries your rentals and all that at that time you feel like you are not doing something good or maybe you are challenged with the money but i have never been uh, in that phase where i feel that there's a lot of challenge in terms of money but i have been challenging myself in terms of the challenging accounts or challenging uh, you know clients that we can work on the the clients problems has been a real challenge to us so there has been many times where we were not able to solve clients problem in terms of marketing in terms of technology i think those were the areas where i consider as an entrepreneur is a challenge not not on the financial side i never looked at the financial side because financial is um, is somewhat uh, you know uh, you know it's like sometimes you have sometimes you don't True. sometimes you have too much also then you think of spending going to you know 
US or going to you know taking a flight to London and 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 go for a trip for about a month or so whatever so uh, i mean but uh, how how entrepreneur think is about uh, is about what is his purpose of life and what where he or she is sailing the entire organization or organizations and what final value add that we are doing to the society i think this is what an entrepreneur always thinks on so basically uh, when any person is starting their own company or their entrepreneurial journey so the biggest challenge what i personally feel is that uh, hiring or uh, building a successful team right building a, a good team so when it comes to team building so what was your steps to uh, build a good team or experienced team or you know so what was your steps which you have taken okay so uh, in regard to team uh, i'll give you two three pointers which i think are very very critical from an entrepreneur mindset is one uh, when you look at team every team member has to be somewhere better than you in one area so if let's say if i am if i am hiring or if i am looking at my technology person then the technology guy should have that kind of a passion that no matter what the technology challenge is the person will be able to s- think through and prove some kind of a solution in that area so that kind of a passion is the fundamental area where um, where any entrepreneur should look at one quality is the passion towards the area that the person is working so some people come and they apply for a job and they want to do 9 to 5 job that's okay but if you have a passionate person in that area then time is not the criteria to look at so person will not look at time so the day starts maybe at 9 or 10 or 11 and the day will never end it's like that so now as we can see that in india every day new startups are coming yeah. right the indian government is supporting the startups with different schemes we have yes. so one advice which you would like to give to any new entrepreneur who is coming or building their startup so see we know that lot of startups are coming that's true that's very true but we need to know the flip side of it lot of startups are ending also true and why this is happening uh, could be that um, either their mindset is not really right mm-hmm. the product the service that they are working on may not be of a right timing maybe they are too early at the stage where they are not prepared uh, with the team with the technology mm-hmm. or maybe the technology is really not present today what they want to do and they want to create and that's very complicated i i i've seen lot of such examples coming in and uh, going in but my uh, thought process for uh, for any new entrepreneur is that you must not stop you must keep doing it because failure is a part of a life it will come every day that it comes to my life every day kind of right but we should not stop we should get into uh, you know doing things like um, you know there is a way that is so 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 there is a hope there is a light we need to work on the project from different perspectives think to talk to many a people that you know so that you can you know get more ideas to execute that the challenge what happens is we think as a startup that we need team we don't have team uh, we need money we don't have money we only have is the idea so idea is everyone on this planet has ideas not even idea everyone so if i True. if we say 6.5 billion people everyone 6.5 has 6.5 billion ideas, ideas. Exactly. multiple of that everyone has an idea so let's say while you were coming to the third floor uh, you might have faced you know why this building doesn't have a lift True. so there's an idea why don't we have a makeshift lift you know that you hire a lift like an uber and you bring the lift it 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 does the job for the day and True. it goes back so there could be multiple ideas but the point is that you need to be consistent about it and let it fail if it is but but we must try it out lot of people they sit with great ideas lot of people are sitting with great money it's just that you need to move to the next level so ideas 
die 99% if you if you are at an ideal level if you take an action at a, as a first step and the first step is creating a plan plan doesn't mean five year plan or a 10 year plan you don't know what i'll be doing on my sunday how can i how, how can i create a plan for five years True. so you create a plan for 60 days 90 days and that's what is enough right i take an action on those 30 days 90 days and I, and i think you'll be moved from where you were you'll be in a better position to talk to the people you'll be in better position to find new team members in your client or maybe co-founders and you better in terms of getting funding as well if you really need it but my advice to the entrepreneurs don't look at funding look at where is the value in the product if you have a product value and society really needs it i mean there will be a queue behind your door who want to pay you who want to invest in you who want to take you to the next level believe me so very well said now uh, for startups it's very like challenging to get into international businesses right to get into uh, their get uh, getting their businesses registered in different countries to make it mnc right so what are the steps you feel because you are already available in different countries right so what are the steps you have followed and what do you think that a new entrepreneur can do to get into international businesses okay so uh, currently whatever business that we do or my companies generally do it we have 50% of a business coming from internationally and since you asked this question i just realized i never knew how can i how can i get into international business but how happened to me or what i would suggest is what procedures that you can you know take it so if you look at in in india every city almost today every tier 2 city has a co-working space right now that's very true for a city like london or for a city like new york too it is just that you need to approach and take a virtual seat there when you take a virtual seat there you can easily they will guide you to register the company in their country very easily and you take a vat number or a whatever gst or service tax number whatever they have it you can very well get it without even going to that country so one is how to start a company as a name that is very easily doable via co-working space itself that can be taken care of my second recommendation to to the people who are looking at international business is look for partners look for same mindset of people who want to get into this business or who are already doing this business so let's say we were doing a business um of digital um uh, you know experiences and marketing and all that stuff so we found a partner in uae who um who does technology business because that is where our business and their business complement each other so if anyone is you know uh, working on a crm solution or a or a or a website business cre- creating multiple websites for different businesses they need marketing at the next level so that is a good idea to partner with them so look at complementing businesses and partner with them that is another way without even going so that you can do s- s- sitting out here itself the way we have india mart the way we have trade india directories here those countries also have it right it now it's your research which area which continent which country which city you want to create your business in so there are demands so i mean if you look at google search so how effectively you can use google searches you go and search uh, the requirement in that country so let's say i need pizza so i go to google and write you know pizza corner i mean pizza near me kind of you know so so it will give me options like this so i can search so google provide me functionality to search let's say i want to do a search in um, um, you know berlin so i can do pizza near me setting up as berlin as a country right so it will show me that now if my business is let's say creating ketchup and uh, you know whatever i'm 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 providing so you'll get those companies who are really there now it's your time to talk to them so you talk to five people i'm sure they'll be uh, they'll be interest and there'll be partnership so first is uh, looking into co-working spaces in other countries wherever you want to go take one seat or virtual office second is look for partners and third is look for um, uh, you know there are a lot of trade shows which also happens in india now if you talk about every industry there's a trade show happening in uh, 
in Delhi, in Mumbai, in Bangalore, everywhere, everywhere, Even every industry. Even virtual trade shows are happening nowadays. Yeah, you talk about automobile, you talk about cosmeceuticals, you talk about printing. Every industry have you know these trade shows happening. Lot of international companies do come in. So recently, I visited one where there were about eleven or twelve country stands were there. So let's say there was Saudi Arabia stand where. uh it was this event uh, uh so one was satay that's a travel event uh sat uh, satay was there in greater noida and um, uh, so 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 there were stands of each country and each country had uh, you know uh, some selected companies under their stands itself so there were about 50 companies under saudi arabia uh, you know um, area that they have taken in the <clears throat> yes even yeah. in like uh, product based companies there are a lot of uh, trade shows happens where international buyer do visits right, right? Uh, there is one show so, uh, trade show is ahar uh, okay. where this is for uh, food food is basically yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so where uh, international companies comes and like for yeah. buying their products yeah it so was there in the delhi in last month itself yes 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 uh, yeah, in yeah. a greater uh, yes in delhi in delhi it so, was yeah so these are the good opportunities where correct, people can correct and that is where you can connect that's right. where you understand their requirements and uh, and there's lot of business happens cross functional as well so i'll give you an idea so let's say if you are a um, um if you are a company which provide some technology solutions maybe you create apps mm -hmm. right so you can visit these trade shows talk to those people who create fridges who create you know uh, what not in the food industry and they also are sitting on a problem that how can we manage our inventory the inventory that we are taking every day you know those uh, potatoes and tomatoes and you know all those stuff how can we manage that can we streamline this process through an app i mean that is what we uh, need to look at uh, those kind of challenges in different industries and that's where the businesses and let's say that company was from uh, saudi arabia and or maybe china so you 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 provide solution so you become their vendor or a technology partner and your business international starts this is how things happen and this has happened with me also so how you landed your like first uh, project from international okay i don't remember which year it was but i think uh, maybe about 15 years back or maybe 14 years back um so there were two projects i started working at the same time one i got it from uh there were sites called elands there is a freelancer site you know i registered myself there and i don't know how i end up doing uh, getting that project from there uh that was one second um uh, there was a friend of mine who shifted to london and his friend was in us so he recommended my name there that uh, you know hey this is gaurav single and you know um, i can do this um, you know this project for you kind of thing so uh, i mean he introduced me and then we had a conversation he liked what uh, what we were doing as a company and my interest areas and he said that this is my challenge can you do something about it i said okay give me 30 days and this much money i'll provide you the solution for that so we created uh, kind of an uh, you know a website plus some back end system to to take care for the leads and all that so now we call it a lead management system but but this is how i land up so it is like if you are doing a good work good work will come back to you now don't ask which country it will come back so today if i see i would have worked with about you know 20 countries so country is not something important for me what's important is the business and the challenge and the that. what kind of projects you are getting right. and how you are delivering right. that every country is very different in nature so if you if you face that there's lot of traffic in delhi and uh, and that's the problem now i think that is there in malaysia also and that's there in <laughs> uae as well how do you manage putting technology there i think that is what there is good solutions so, are so uh, when it comes to uh, doing business in internationally hmm. so any legalities which is involved if you are even sitting in india you're yes. do, doing the business yes, of course. from international legalities are there in india also mm -hmm. so um so that is where your partner helps mm -hmm. so what happens is if i talk about a country like uae you need to register your company there that is one second mm -hmm. is you need to take a trade license a trade license is something that it's a vertical specific so i want to do a training i have a trade license for training i want to do a software i i need to have a 
trade license for the software. Mm-hmm. So for everything that you do, you need to take a trade license, and that is yearly cost, and that's a good cost itself. So that is where your partner helps. You know, partner creates business opportunities, and they simply outsource work to you. You be in India, you just work on the um, uh, you know on the product, on the services, and thereafter you deliver what what it is. So that works very well. Great. So coming back to the marketing point of view, so any successful campaign which you feel that this is the most successful campaign happened in India. Uh, so I I have come from a background where we have seen Doordarshan ads also. True. Right, and uh, we I I really remember the times when we were we were having a uh, black and white TV at our mm-hmm. homes, and we used to see Ramayana and we used to see Mahabharata in that on every Sunday. I I I clearly remember those days where the city goes blank and all that. So the brands that still I am still able to recall are uh, Amul, Lifebuoy, and you know thereafter I think it was Fevicol. I mean I mean those are the ads that uh, are are in my mind and um, uh, you know uh, I still feel that I mean they have been doing. Uh, the marketing from donkey years true uh, every year you see great ads coming up um, and multiple agencies marketing agencies would have mm-hmm. changed at their point of time but uh, the brands and the uh, which you know even when you are sleeping if you are able to recall two three brands i think that's that company has done a great marketing so if you are asking right now to me and i am saying liveboy and and amul or maybe a lot of products of hindustan liver really? i think they have done a magically good job Uh, that I remember in campaigns. Yeah, yeah. Right. So uh, when like about you. Yeah. So you have done a lot of campaigns. Yeah. yeah. For Indian brands. For Every year brands, we do. Right? So any particular campaign which you feel that is the most successful campaign as per you. See how do we define success? I think we need to understand that also. True. Uh, <clears throat> so any brand, whenever any brand comes to us. they have their own challenge and the first challenge is they have less money you know this is what they right. they say that we have less money but we want to reach more how can we do this with you okay so now um, so so there is a part called media buying where mm-hmm. the media buying happens and uh, we 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 try to do justice with that in terms of reaching out to the maximum target audiences that we could out of that uh the second the second angle is the creativity which is actually the most important perspective to it how creative you can be in that so i i'm i'm fortunate enough to work with uh, one campaign with philips healthcare mm-hmm. another campaign i work with the uh, national uh, geographic i think those two campaigns were very very successful campaigns i'll not get into detail because i i don't think so this is a great pre- platform right. to talk about creatives and right, who did right. that and how much we achieve 500% to 2000% so it's not that but um, which actually gives you lot of satisfaction in terms of uh, uh, brand association and uh, to reaching out to the audience i think uh, those campaigns i would call uh, the team was very excited when we did the, all that so uh, i mean those are the campaigns which i would recall uh, we did great job there since 2009 hmm. to 2023 hmm. what are the marketing trends which has like been changed okay so this is a non ending process true every year something <laughs> new is coming every year something some blast is happening i would call true. it you know <laughs> sometimes you will hear that twitter is growing sometimes you will hear that twitter blue tick is gone right. so you know sometimes you will see that even instagram is selling the blue tick yeah yeah <laughs> some news so uh, see what i what i've seen is that uh, since uh, in last you know 10 12 years where the entire um, industry is moving towards is is towards personalization now now the phone that you have it has only those apps which you feel are good for you or which you want so it's personalized for you the apps that i have in my phone that's are personalized to me now that is level 1 of personalization second is that whatever content that you see on any app any content that you see on any app is also very personalized 
so the industry is moving towards super personalization that i want to hear punjabi songs so i will you know i will always get those that kind of a content you know in my uh, in my feeds in my in my emails so so i mean whatever your interest are you'll going to thrown with those so the trend if i talk about where it is going it is going into a super personalization stage where none of your information is confidential is privacy protected everything is known to almost everyone in this planet whomsoever want to know so people want to know what kind of a cookies are there in my system and what i serve and what i what content i see and <clears throat> what i search so based on that the content comes in and it keeps on engaging people and lot of arts so so people who spend lot of time on social media just serving content my advice to them is stop doing that don't waste time because that will not going to lead you anywhere because you are actually putting your time out of that the platform owner is actually earning money out of you and they are not giving you any money surfing doesn't give you any money actually <laughs> nowadays like youth is more to their instagram watching the reels watching youtube shorts is more like spending their most of the time on social platforms right so what are your advice like other than uh, less using the platform so what are your advice to youth i i, I think focus on your life first because your mobile and the content that you are actually you know surfing is not your life there is a life you need to understand the value of life also what you want to do is not in your mobile what you want to do is out when you perform when you go and present when you meet people when you laugh that is what the life is all about so i personally i'm not saying that i i as a person as a marketing professional and you know my company is is also around marketing and technology so we keep talking about you know marketing and how we can engage how we can do this how we can do that and you know taking 48 hours of out of 24 hours of every human being this is what we try to do in marketing <laughs> you know but but my advice is that give time to yourself give time to your dreams give time to your projects give time to your vision that you have for your life set it up if you don't have it and work for it i think that is where more because your eyes will be saved i think you are you're spoiling your eyes also you're spoiling your mind also you're filling your mind with lot of kachra and which which actually you don't need it you know <laughs> have quality content limit time i think these apps should also put it some time frame which is talking about that i want to use 30 minutes instagram so out of third out, when you are cross 30 minutes instagram will not work for that day yeah, i think this is a great idea uh, similar in youtube but they do not stop but they uh, will give you the reminder that uh, yes this much has time these are the soft thing they are trying yeah, so because is trying. this is all what they can do <coughs> beyond yeah. this they don't want to actually because even they don't want to stop like people to absolutely. from using that from, absolutely this is what they, they are their from their revenue is so they will not do that yeah yeah so uh, coming to the startup part yeah. that let's suppose if any particular product based company if we'll take yes. about and they have a very less budget yes. for marketing so what are the things which they can focus on to reach more and more people what are the areas which they need to focus on so here you are talking about that the product is ready or they still have uh, to yes no the product like product based companies maybe it can be fmcg or electric products or anything yeah. in fmcg yeah. uh, basically so my suggestion to them is uh whatever your budget is mm -hmm. first of all decide the number of days that you want to run this budget so let's say i have x budget which will going to run 30 days or 60 days or 90 days now try to not to reach to everyone that's possible try to reach your target audience and repeat them with at least 10 times because when you see the ad first time when you see the ad second time you'll not convert no you at least require 8 10 times of viewing that ad for that brand or that communication to register in your mind and then you take some action to it mm -hmm. so whatever budget that you have take a beta version out of it spend on a certain target audiences so let's say if i if my if my product fits for entire india but here i need to choose a city so you choose a city like a bangalore or a chennai or um, delhi and then in delhi run for 30 days 
get the exact metrics out mm -hmm. and then you replan that campaign as a beta version or an alpha version and then redo it but do you think that for startups they have that much of budget where they can go for beta version or something no no beta what i'm trying to say is that whatever budget that you have pull out a small amount of from that and say it at a beat okay. at a beta campaign like when any company is starting so do you think that when it comes to marketing so the creative design or something which plays a role yeah. so so Very how good. important it is to understand any entrepreneur that yes that creative part also plays a important role in marketing see the heart of um, of any startup is their product or a service that is where the real value is so let's say i'll take an example so if i use colgate or i use um, uh, you know um, uh, any other toothpaste where the value is if it is giving me repeated good value i'll continue with that product this is very fundamental if there is there is a uh, you know depreciation in that value that i'm getting or there is no value no matter how good your marketing is i'm i i will not going to use my money to buy that product again okay your marketing could be great but i may not take that product right because of the product quality product uh, essence and the feel that the product is giving to me so that is the core we can't you know play anything around it now when we talk about the marketing and the creative world when the product is done now your bigger game is how creative you can be to reach out to a problem where it really stuck so let's say if you're feeling hungry food is the only thing that can you know get your hunger settle money cannot So if I give you, uh, you know, a two thousand rupees note, and I ask you that, do you feel okay, not to have food? You will not actually. So try to figure it out. Where is the core problem? Do your communication or create communication around the core problem of the people. So if if people if if let's say for a for a bottling plant or for a, a beverage business if pyas is your keyword then talk about pyas so don't talk about that it'll it'll, it'll take care for your you know uh, summer hunger uh, thirst or whatever and you can use multiple words to express that go as close as you can to your target audience hear your their words and put that in your creative communication that works the best and be open be bold as much as you can i think that will going to change the game altogether people will start uh hearing you listening you um appreciating you and that is the core job of marketing and communication i think that is where uh that job is done then the job comes of the product if the product is good you are ahead right so now coming to the technology part so there are a lot of new technologies coming every day yeah in uh, the field of marketing as well yeah so which one do you feel that any particular technology which is really evolving the marketing industry see um today uh, chat gpt has been talked in every con in every conversation that you hear yesterday even i was um, uh, watching a, a news channel which was uh, aaj tak and uh, uh, there was a anchor which was um, artificially created and all that anchor was saying was also done by an ai so it was a game of an ai on the tv which which i saw just yesterday so what i'm trying to say is the technology will keep evolving and why technology is evolving is because that usage of the technology can solve your problem of the next level right so um now what i'm trying to say is there'll be some technology which will be hyped a lot there'll be some technology which which will take time so let's say i'll give an example i heard that uh, mark Zuc mark zuckerberg was working heavily on metaverse and integrating metaverse in meta products a lot so he's been working very closely on this area now i think we as 
country we as humans are not really ready for that right now what i feel it may be 2 years down the line we all will be doing something on ai vi and you know uh, you know all all that on metaverse as well experiencing our malls and you know all that but but today we are not ready for that so technology sometimes gives you access to what you really need as solving your problem sometimes they are too early sometimes um, you know uh, they may let you confuse also so a lot of our uh, clients and i've seen business owners because that is where i work the most um, they are confused between uh, my website needs to be in wordpress shopify php .net and what not so for them that's a technology thing and they are confused among it now today if you have to create content there are tons of tools which are available online it's like chat gpt it's like you know um, uh, you know there are plenty of them copy.ai and you know all those which which are helping you to create content so for content writers it is like um you know um, uh, the fabulous year which has been started but don't you feel that it, it is uh, going to reduce the job of uh, copywriters or content writers see i think um, up frontly it is looking like this only um uh, but when the computers came you know bill gates said that i think i will be able to um uh, you know the, the 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 ibm owner actually said that i think i'll be able to create seven or eight world needs only seven or eight computers bill gates also said that i think there are a few people who need my software but the how do people perceived as computers are there humans will be out everything will be done by computers but that had didn't, didn't happen correct so if that didn't happen these kind of technologies will definitely hit somewhere some jobs will going to go for sure but humans are not like you know they will adapt they will adapt to new profiles you need someone to run chat gpt also you need someone to review what chat gpt has done it you want someone to review a lot of things i mean those things so people will transform profiles will transform new skills will going to come to the market and that is where i see the uh, the transformation happening with this guys with this set of technologies so uh, search engine optimization is a very important aspect of marketing right so could you please uh, put some light on search engine optimization how it happens or what are the things see the way technology has evolved the search engine optimization has also evolved uh now i i i i started my career with seo the first thing that i did was seo it was you know long back uh but since then it has evolved in a way that you need to be more skilled to understand that space altogether because how smooth you see google functioning or the google products functioning the more complicated they are at the back end and they would never let you know that uh, that you know seo mm -hmm. so all the seos of the world google want to give them a feeling that you know i am the boss i can change anything anytime i will i will shake you any day mm -hmm. so no one can commit you know yesterday you were on the second page today you are on today you are nowhere right because every day some new algorithm is coming up even in social media or google or everywhere and that's important also because otherwise what will happen is people who know uh, how to rank on the first page then they will dominate they will always be on the top their products their services and all that so google is very i mean the algorithm is planned in such a good way that even if you are if you are the best of the best in the world it doesn't it doesn't guarantee that you will be on the top uh i mean you need to be really right in your seo then only you'll be on the top so the students which like who are they into their mbas or bbas or any any particular course they are pursuing yeah so uh, what are the advice for them who want to start their career into digital marketing see i think what's happening right now is um uh, everyone is fascinated about social media 
if you if you go to a class of uh, you know 60 students or maybe 30 students what you will figure it out is is that 90% of the people want to get into digital marketing but the irony is that they get fascinated about it but they are not learning right actually they need to do some courses to understand the technology to understand the softwares understand the uh, uh, the environment how to do social media even if they are doing it it's it's not about creating a post and posting a post it is it it could be the lowest thing that is there but there's lot of analytics into it there's lot of science in the content creation into it that what kind of a content that needs to be well researched what kind of a hashtags are popular today may not be you know tomorrow yeah so so there's lot of science there's lot of hard work there's lot of usage of tools that they need to learn so first point is that they if they are really excited about getting into digital they must do all this and they are all free which are available then they decide that they they really want to get into this or not because this is what they want to do in their life or not so ex- excitement is okay but they have to test this excitement that can i live 30 days with this excitement and it will if it will excite me more then only i'll go beyond building my career and um, uh, for a class like um, people who are doing a pg course i think my advice for them would be that digital is something which every organization today so even if you if if a mckinsey or a um, hindustan labor is recruiting you they are they are looking some skills on the digital side as well if you are a business development person hr or a marketing person you have to know digital uh, somewhere you know at say for an hr it is very important to be to be through with all the tools which are which linkedin provides you to um, to get on to the people to you know to head hunt or whatever it is i think that is very very important uh, from that perspective so digital is is a part of it so it's like a subject we have to study deciding you will get into it or not i think let's try it first if if it really settles with you and you feel great about it then only there are hundreds of profiles which are available in digital and it is a fastest growing thing right now from a profile from knowledge from salary every perspective some businesses wants to some businesses are already there some business wants to move to the next level so they need people they need workforce who is skilled at different levels it's not that you need a website i'll give you the website so that's done no it's just a starting point Okay, so, so for f- freshers, if we'll talk about, yeah. So, uh, what do you think that during their starting of the career, so do they should join the startup to learn more, or do they should join any MNC or a big company to learn more? Where do ca- where they can learn better? See, learning is we think learning will going to happen in a company, and we then mark that. that if it's a startup i'll learn more because i am doing lot of things if it's an mnc there's a structured way of working i can only work in my department kind of but i have another meaning to the learning the person who wants to learn company is not the criteria criteria is one is the passion area if the person is really into the passion area that is one second is that how much time the person can give i have seen people join startups also and working 16 hours a day i have seen people joining mnc and working 20 hours a day if they really want to work then only they can work otherwise it will going to phase out in few days or maybe few weeks so where your passion is startup or a big mnc doesn't matter what matters is where your passion and how it is inclined towards that brand or the work that you need to do it's all around that it's not in the name actually it's in your karma or whatever you want to do it's actually really so very well it. explained so i just want to like uh, know about that let's suppose if any particular fresher is there like 
yeah. from college graduates if we'll talk about so sometimes they get confused about Not sometimes whether, hmm. every time so yeah so all freshers are hmm. confused so whether that particular role is fascinating them or they are really interested into that see uh, uh, in colleges and in schools also there's a mad race hmm. if you are my best friend you are going to this college i will also go to this hmm. college right i want to do arts but you are doing science because you are my best friend right you are doing science i will also do science you're going to engineering i also go engineering so this is a mad race which is there and in india it is very prevalent i mean i don't know i am the part of this or not but confusion is is something which is very uh, very fundamental whenever there are two ways that left or right you are confused this is how i see correct now uh, today if i see the career opportunities if i see the courses which are there in the colleges i think every year i hear about five seven new courses which are there in the industry which has never been there right you talk about robotics you talk about um, uh, you know uh, 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 painting you'll find painting in your as your um, um, you know as in your 12th standard as well you have a board exam on the painting can you beat it right so the point is that confusion is a part of life let's understand that where you want to go decide there because your best friend will get a good job it does not mean you'll get some money in your pocket out of that right so focus on yourself focus on what you want to do and try it out and let it fail if it is okay i've seen lot of people joining x course after a year they leave and join another course which is absolutely okay but if they don't do it that is where the problem is and stay confused so better be confused and then move select a path and move ahead of it that is what i my, i would recommend so do you think that mentors are playing a good roles or absolutely so how a student can find their mentor see uh, i like the idea of uh, arvind kejriwal where he created a you know um, a campaign where uh, where anyone can anyone be can be a mentor i saw yeah i saw that and that's a great campaign i i've not been but that is for delhi a, only right no it's not about delhi mm -hmm. it's about that there are campaigns like this mm -hmm. i'm sure um, the other states other also states may be following follow similar that. kind of thing but but you don't require a campaign to mentor anyone if you want to so i'm talking about from a mentor perspective if you want to mentor you go to five you call five colleges that i want to mentor your students they will ask you your profile and they will approve you and they'll give you five students to mentor mm -hmm. it's so easy today within few hours you'll get some students to mentor okay. you decide whom you want to mentor it's like you want to mentor graduate students you want to mentor pg students you want to mentor startups you want to mentor big size companies so i mean that is difficult but yeah even for startups there are hundreds and hundreds of websites which actually list startups they have a section for mentors also mm -hmm. go and register yeah startup india government program also is there dpit every state government has their, it today yes they give their mentors they give yeah. their central government mm -hmm. has it every state government has it plus there are plenty of private organizations which has listed startups on certain areas so mentoring on one side as a mentor because you learn a lot when you mentor because you need to understand person you need to understand team you need to understand structures products this the space that they are working on you as a mentor learn a lot so i think you if you are stable in your job or whatever you are doing pull out few hours a week and mentor someone i think you'll you'll, you'll get the feeling like you are uh, you know you're feeding your own baby this is how the mentorship is to a mentor now when we when we talk about the other side of it the people who are taking mentor mentorship teams or individuals they need to follow the mentor because you know you are confused so mentor is guiding you it's time to follow and move out of that space right mentor wrong mentor maybe what some people look at right wrong means vertical specific mentor so i may be a good technology mentor but i may be a very bad uh, aerospace mentor 
because that I, that space i don't understand so have a right kind of a mentor and that mentor will going to guide you to move to the next level It'll, the mentor actually helps you to show both the directions so there are left and right pros and cons of left pros and cons of right and where your alignment happens your vision your uh, goal or your passion lines you take that take a step and move ahead let it fail so what my primary advice to um uh, you know people who are who want to start and they are just hooked somewhere and they have, they have a fear to start a fear of failure let it come let it fail you because failure is a part of life so how do you deal with failures so i i i think this is a fantastic question uh see every failure so failure why the failure happens because you decide something to do and then you expect that this will result in this kind of a result right your expectation so failure happens on your expectations so i expect that i should be earning x money that's my expectation if i don't earn i am a failure right now i'll give you interesting aspect to it the my uh, my thought process how my thought process goes so i i'll talk about the flip side first which is success let's talk success what is success so success actually lies in the person's eye who is looking at you so i'll tell you so let's say if i drive a car bmw and i stay in a bungalow for you i may be a successful person may not be for me because you may be needing that bungalow and that car you understand that for you i may be successful and you may be looking at somebody who is having their own private jet so no 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 not even that i want maybe i want to do farming <laughs> yes right so that is that is where my success is success depends upon perspective perspective so this is what i'm trying to say is it's your perspective your definition of success not my so for my success you are defining what success is or he may be defining what success is correct and 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 success is a mindset actually and so the failure is also if you achieve you say it that it's a success you say it it's a failure but you know for an entrepreneur these things like success and failures are everyday part actually so so you know we we decide bigger projects let's say i'm setting up an office um, um, across the borders and you know and uh, i'm expecting some revenue to come in and and a team to work ar- around it so those things are there if that doesn't happen it's a failure this is how we term it but every failure lets you learn more than what you can do in a success thing right you now you know that this is not the way to work now if you if you if you talk about the uh, the electricity bulb how it's been invented so the inventor knows how many times 300 times this bulb cannot be or electricity cannot be invented like this right so with failures we come out as entrepreneur community i'm saying we come out far better they are dense in our businesses in our revenues in our profits every time there's a failure there's a dent right the way we understand but uh but this is where we become stronger as well so if you fail to do one crore of revenue you don't stop you think 10 crore of the revenue this is what the failure means to me right so it's a it's a uh, mindset i would call it and makes off everything it it passes away very soon you know overnight sometimes one weekend so what keeps you motivated i think uh, it's not a, so i don't need any extra motivation it's like uh, it's like a daily thing you know it's like a habit so motivation is a habit to me you know because entrepreneur ko kya karna hota hai usko apni light nahi jalani hoti उसने बाकी टीम में भी लाइट जलानी होती है सो एवरी डे 
you 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 are not you are alone in a way but you need to support the team wherever they are you need to understand their challenges that is what the entrepreneur's life is actually you need to sometimes you need to see client side also that client side you know what the person is or the client is saying is is absolutely wrong how can i correct it without creating a dent on his side <laughs> right so this journey itself it's so it's so good that you create motivation from one part of it and you and and you transfer that uh, motivation to the other uh, people or so sometimes something good happening at the team sometimes that transformation is required to the client side right so so i deliver a lot of talks uh in person face to face i'm not a uh, i'm not a digital guy from that that i'm conducting a webinar or and all that and i work a lot with a lot of confused people so called you know who want to do their startups who want to do who want to be in their college uh stage at different stages you, you know you are working as a business coach as well right uh i uh, i don't know should should i call it a business coach but i have been working with business owners a lot uh in the marketing and technology domain this i have i have been working from last couple of years so how like how do you uh, mentor them or how do you coach them basically okay so uh so everything starts with a business challenge so most of the time it has happened with my clients only that uh, their businesses are facing some challenges in 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 regard to marketing and and the technology that is where i come in as a hand holding person that what right team that you need what right setup that you need what right marketing firms or agencies that you need what right technology people that you need setting up that uh, plus working out with them on creating their schedules and timelines and the delivery side on this because for a, any business owner the larger the organization the larger the challenges to deal with this also so um and every business owner doesn't have time so we need to opt for a simple strategy of delegation which business owner resists to they want to do maximum things on their own i mean this is a general tendency if you see with a business owner lot of things they want to do on your own they will have ceos and they will have um, ctos and project managers and you know everyone to manage everything but they want to oversee everything almost every day and this is how the thought process of a business owner so so delegation is something that uh, i try to work with them as their habit and then cross checking on that delegation is a process that you follow or your team will follow so that it works automatically so when while working with business owners it's i think this is what i want to do in my in in the rest of my life um uh, because every day they have a different kind of a challenge and that actually motivates you as, as you asked me what made motivates you so if i get a call from a client that this is a problem that is something a trigger for my motivation that will make me stand up and fight for that you know this is what my life is all about and this is what i train people also no, and that's, that's really it. wonderful that thinking about someone else thinking about someone else's businesses and then uh, working out for that so this is something makes you different right so now coming to your personal life as an a you person so what exactly like you do in your uh, vacant time or you, in your free time okay so um three things i do one fundamentally so whenever i'm driving and sometimes you know you go to from delhi to gurgaon or you know you're going to other cities also i i listen a lot of music and i'm a fan of a lot of punjabi music and i'm a let like, i can hear 24 hours a day i mean i'm i'm like that because there are different flavors in it and different singers in it i have my my list is long so that is one second side of me uh, is that uh, i play a, I, I, i try to pull out a lot of time with my son and we play different games uh, indoor outdoor both so i spend a lot of time with my son and family uh, in playing uh, different games and um, uh, recently i picked up a habit i'm not a, a reader uh, I, i don't i don't read too many things but in um, in last 6 months or so 
I picked up about seven eight books. Any favorite I've, book? Ah, uh, favorite book. I can't say I've not read a lot, but recently I finished a book called Rework. Uh, that was by James, I guess. Ah, uh, that was a great book. To I would recommend every entrepreneur to read that, and that will clear your, um, you know, confusions and doubts, and uh, you know, it'll it'll keep you walking, kind of moving, fasting, running, you know, or what not. So. how do you manage your time that is more important like in business like giving time to your business giving time to your family giving time to your clients so how you are managing that uh, i don't know how do i manage so so, so there is no science actually mm-hmm. it's just that uh, i try to um, um, you know um, work office things in the office hours and um, uh, and family things in the family hours so uh, this is if you adopt this maybe you know you'll be more safer in your sound sleep uh, i think a lot about a process rather than getting myself involved in everything that how this can be done with the process so that second time whenever it comes at a family life or a or a professional life how this can be done systematically or professionally and you know systematically so uh, i i i try to adopt that but um, managing time i think it's a balance issue that you need to create uh, some time so um, i mean lot of days i'm late to the home also uh, but i try to justify over the weekends um, so it's like you know i i think in between what you're trying to ask is where is the me time could be <laughs> right so um yeah. now this me time is uh, listening to songs reading to books and playing with the, the yeah 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 so i think that is my me time mm-hmm. if i if if i see there's nothing lot i mean as in going out and having dinners and lunches and all those that's there in the professional life professional also life. that's there in the personal life also True. so that's not i'm very crazy about it but uh, yeah. but going to uh, hills uh, is is what i really like um going to farms that i really like so this maybe i want to spend a uh, lot on. more time there maybe i want to have a break from my professional life for a year mm-hmm. this is what i'm been planning from long right. from long but i think sooner i'll be i'll be do you like traveling i do like travel mountains or hills like uh, plain uh, areas see um every so india is a country which has all mm-hmm. and most of the countries in the world doesn't have all mm-hmm. with them uh so uh, see a traveler for a traveler traveler also have subjects so this personal likings let's say i go to hills more then i go to beaches so but when you go to a hill next time you don't want to go to a hill you want right. to go to a beach or right. you want to go to somewhere varieties. which is plateaus and you know we indians uh, want variety yeah. in everything correct correct so <laughs> we want to sometimes you want to go to you know uh south of india to experience uh, right. you know uh, beca- because india is so different everywhere that you go the the smell the water the food the culture Everything that imbibes you yeah. uh, you know so so, so i have seen half of the india i think Great. i've been to half the india yeah so that's, that was so uh, amazing that uh, because traveling is something which uh keeps you giving the motivation or keeps you uh giving the learnings actually that Absolutely. even if you are traveling to any anywhere let's suppose if you are traveling to punjab so you'll be learning the culture of the punjab the type of food they are eating type of music they are listening similarly if you'll go to south india you'll find out so things about that yeah last year that reminds me last year i took about 15 days of training in a city called coimbatore mm-hmm. and um the all students were tamilians <coughs> so they speak tamil as a language mm-hmm. it was a and, and no one understands hindi mm-hmm. so it was a little of a problem for me to to get settled but i think within a, within a day or so we were i was also understanding a bit of tamil mm-hmm. and they were understanding quite good english actually and and in some few words in hindi as well so 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 india is a uh, india is a place where uh, there are lot of cultures are there so you learn a lot so as you meet different set of people you learn a lot because challenges and of specifically if i talk about business owners uh, the community that i work with same problem 
if it is in kolkata it's very different than it is in chennai so so that's how the business revolves as well so from a coach perspective or from a mentor perspective uh, at times or a business owner perspective same problem will occur in different uh, religion different mm. region different uh, culture will be very very different it has to be answered very differently mm. so a hindi speaking blogger can't do much good in a state like tamil nadu so you need a tamilian so thank you so much it was a wonderful talking to you and i'm sure the audience is going to learn a lot and the or like whosoever is a aspiring entrepreneur or the students will get a great insight from this talk thank you so much for taking your thank time thank you thank you shambhavi and i think you also done a great job today <laughs> thank yeah? you all right thank you